Sunday, February 4th, 2024, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Yeah, Rudy's uh, <laughs> on the job again. Uh, today actually is uh, the uh, one year anniversary since Rudy first uh, came home. He was eight weeks old. We went to pick him up at the, at the uh, breeder's house. Uh, we had seen seen him before, like uh, back before Christmas, and uh, some of you, of course, or most of you, know that uh, uh, Billy, of course, was the the Shih Tzu that we had prior to Rudy. He passed away, unfortunately, on December twelfth, two thousand twenty-two, and uh, he used to uh, be a big part of the channel. And uh, I think Rudy's done well. Uh, being part of the channel as well uh, he's uh, yeah he's fit right in he's uh, learned really quickly how to uh, lay on the sofa there uh, behind me and uh, yeah participate in our uh, chats and be part of the community so uh, Rudy uh, welcome again and uh, it's great to uh, have you uh, here with us and hopefully you will be around for many, many uh, more years. So uh, <laughs> he, he wants to go out actually in the garden. It's quite a nice day. Well, it's not that bad, but uh, he, he likes going out there and doing a lot of things he shouldn't. But anyway, let me uh, put him out there and I'll come back uh, to talk about more serious things. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today are coins and specifically gold and silver coins and uh, a lot of people might think are you a Luddite why why would you want to talk about gold and silver coinage um, that's a thing of the past maybe so and uh, we're supposedly in this uh, digital world where we don't need real things that uh, Everything can be divided infinitesimally, like uh, Satoshis or digital coins or whatever, that it's much more efficient, of course, until it doesn't work <laughs> when the internet go goes uh, dark or whatever. So, yes, it, it might, might sound a, a little bit like trying to go back to the past, but I, I think sometimes... Things get too uh, complicated, and there's the old saying about keeping it simple, and also Occam's razor, uh, the uh, old saying that the easiest, the the best thing is usually the uh, simplest uh, thing. So that that's why I want to talk about gold and silver coinage and how uh, the system we had in the UK up until I would say 1919 ran perfectly for 200 years or maybe even more and uh, I hear a lot of people saying oh we couldn't use gold and silver uh, how would we pay for things you know what if I wanted to just buy maybe you know go to a restaurant and have lunch with the family and it would be like a hundred pounds how would they give me change for a sovereign or a half sovereign uh, and so on and uh, I was looking at uh, my coins yesterday uh, my numismatic coins that is and some bullion coins and and I've decided to show you how they used to do it how our great grandparents and before them uh, used to uh, transact and it wasn't complicated and it was really uh, I would say uh, a very good system if you really look at it so I decided to uh, put these coins here, as you can see, together. And uh, the coi coins underneath are the, the silver coinage, the sterling. And, and what does sterling actually mean? Well, sterling is the um, standard for the silver coinage that the UK had up until 1919. Coinage, coins of the realm that circulated as money and currency. And, and why 1919? Well, because 
up until uh, because at the end of World War One, the the UK unfortunately uh, bankrupted uh, itself to pay for that war, so it couldn't afford. It, it printed a, a, a lot of money out of thin air. It suspended uh, the convertibility of gold as well during that war. So the government basically cheated. <laughs> something that it usually uh, didn't do in, in times of peace, but war, of course, and uh, big crises uh, give government an excuse to uh, trample on, on the rule of law. And I'm, am I saying it was right what they did? I personally don't think so. Uh, I, I think, um, yes, unfortunately, trampling, trampling on the rule of law, how they did, at the outset of World War One is what led to the war being a lot longer, a lot more bloody and deadly. Uh, it totally uh, bankrupted the country, of course. Um, well, put the country on the road to bankruptcy. I, I think uh, it, it took uh, just over 60 or 55 years uh, in 1976 when the UK had to call the IMF. Of course, there was another war in the uh, interim, <laughs> World War II. But let's go through these uh, coins then. So uh, the bigger uh, silver coin or sterling silver coin here is the uh, crown. And the, the value, the, the measuring value of it, the unit of account of a crown was 60 pence. Uh, then you have a half crown and you can uh, experiment at home if you buy these coins uh, weigh them and uh, you'll see that uh, they're all they're, it's called a half crown because it's half the weight of a crown so I think Rudy now <laughs> he wants to come back in so give me a minute sorry for the uh, interruption uh, Rudy is back in the room <laughs> he didn't want to go on the sofa probably better because his paws are not uh, very clean right now but as I was saying um, yes you can buy these coins where would you buy them well one place that I like going to is the uh, Peter Morris coin and metal shop in, in Bromley Southeast London I'm not affiliated with him I'm just a good friend I I've been going there for years he's got all these coins if you're interested uh, or you can look on eBay or elsewhere. Uh, th there's uh, loads of places where you could buy them, but I, I really uh, trust Peter Morris. Uh, yeah, try him out. But anyway, back, back to the half crown. So the half crown is half the weight of the crown. And of course, uh, its uh, value of account is 30 pence. And then it gets a little bit... Uh, like you might think oh why does it go <laughs> down to 24 pence why a florin which is basically a, a double shilling well we'll come to that in a minute but anyway a, a, a florin is uh the uh, unit of account was 24 pence and then you go down to uh the shilling which is a, about the size of a quarter a u.s quarter or a one swiss franc silver coin or even the current Swiss franc. So that's 12 uh, pence. Then you get the sixpence, <laughs> which is, uh, yeah, six, six pence. And the threepence, or threepenny bit, which is uh, three pence. Uh, I don't have any uh, of the pennies or tuppence, but uh, you could also argue that uh, copper was important, but uh, I'm just gonna stick to gold and silver here. And uh, just to show you how, you know, they could still um, mint these coins, uh, it's doable. I've got here a 2023 sixpence. It was a special uh, edition by the uh, Royal Mint. So, as you can see here, the sixpence. And, uh, and I've tested, it's the same, it, it's, you know, it's the same um, size and weight as the old sixpence. So, you uh, probably wanting me to move up to the uh, gold coins. 
Uh, well, let's move up to the, the sovereign. Uh, that's the bigger, bigger gold coin. Uh, and we've got Queen Victoria there on the obverse. And uh, the uh, unit of account of a sovereign uh, is a pound, and it still is to, to this day. The legal tender value uh, or the, the face value of a pound is, of a sovereign is a pound. And then you have a half sovereign there. So that's half a pound. And uh, a pound uh, was 240 pence. So with this in mind, let's look at some scenarios in the real world uh, today in the UK, how uh, these coins could be used to transact, uh, you know, be it at, at a corner shop, be it at Asda, be it at a restaurant, be it uh, buying uh, something uh, for Christmas. So let's start from the, from the bottom, uh, the, the threatening bit, the sixpence and the shilling. And uh, yes, let's say we go to the shop and we're told that uh, the loaf of bread is uh, sixpence. So it's very easy. You just pay with sixpence. Let's say you had a shilling, though. Well, you uh, pay with a shilling. Uh, and uh, they can give you uh, two th threatening bits or they can give you a six pence back. So there's no problem with the change. Yes, and I would also add uh, the pennies, the copper pennies and tuppence. That also helps, but I haven't got <laughs> uh, those with me. So uh, we just go with the, the silver and the gold and it works quite well uh, already with the silver and the gold. Uh, I think the uh, copper uh, coinage just complements it uh, a little better, uh, more exact. So no problem there. So now let's go to a, a supermarket and uh, to do the week's shopping for, let's say, a family of five. And let's say you spent 200 pounds, uh, fiat pounds, of course. And uh, let's say the sovereign right now is just under 400 pounds, but let's say it's worth 400 pounds. So it's half a sovereign. So there are several ways that you could pay for your... Um, supermarket shopping, your weekly supermarket shopping. Uh, so one of the ways is you could pay with two crowns because that's 120 pence and that's a half a pound and, and that's uh, the equivalent of 200 pounds today. You could of course pay with a half sovereign which is 200 pounds or you could pay with four half crowns or you could pay with five florins, <laughs> or you could pay with 10 shillings. So <laughs> uh, how great is that? You have all the options of how to pay for things with all these coins here. So let's say we go now to, to buy a new car not a new car, let's say a used car, even though it's getting harder to, to buy cheap, cheaper uh, used cars now, because especially here in, in Greater London, the whole of London, you <laughs> it's very difficult to buy cars that are old cars that are diesel and, and even petrol or gasoline because they're not compliant anymore. But let's say in a perfect world where we could buy whatever we really wanted, uh, we went to buy, uh, let's say, a used car for our teenage daughter or teenage son, their first car. And let's say we, we're we going to pay uh, 4,000 pounds. So, and looking at um, the coinage here, uh, the sovereign, that's 400 pounds. So that would be very easy. We could just take 10 of those and exchange it for the car. <laughs> uh, and that's how easy it is. Or we, we could take a combination of all the other coins, or we could, of course, take, uh, let's say, 20 half sovereigns, or we could take a combination of half sovereigns and sovereigns. And uh, you can see how it works. It's very simple. Uh, and, and I hope with this video that it proves to you that 
It's not complicated. It's just that we're not used to it anymore. And it was uh, with this system that Britain, uh, yes, <laughs> went from a pretty agrarian, fairly poor society, let's say in the 1700s, to uh, probably the most advanced up until that point uh, uh, industrial society uh, or economy that we've had by the early 1900s. And we did it with the with the uh, gold and silver bimetallic uh, system. And uh, I don't see why we, we couldn't have uh, the system come back. Uh, I'm sure, of course, a lot of you are saying, well, Mario, you are a Luddite. <laughs> We're in the digital world. Yes, but as I said earlier, sometimes uh, too much of a, a good thing and, and all the uh, loss of privacy, uh, loss of uh, control that you have using uh, digital things um, could backfire, I think. And that's why I think we need to uh, learn about these things. It, it, it's like a, an insurance system a, against the whole of society going haywire <laughs> and... Um, by now, uh, you should realize, uh, many of you at least, that um, faith and confidence in, in the people who run our governments, the people who run our uh, monetary or currency system, because I would say we don't even have a monetary system because we don't really use real money like uh, we used to do up until 1919 or 1914. Yeah, when that happens, when you lose faith and confidence, when you don't believe anything they say anymore, I think we need to be prepared, prepared for such a system. Yes, it, it would be more, uh, more of a system where things would be slower. Uh, people wouldn't be going, uh, buying things from China and paying on your card and uh, getting it shipped by Amazon. We'd be going back to a simpler uh, but more trustworthy world in small communities. So uh, even though this might sound a, a little bit uh, quaint, I think it's interesting, not just uh, in historical terms to, to look at these coins, but also in practical terms. So that's where I'm going to end here, uh, the conversation. And uh, yes, let me know in the uh, comment section if you like these kind of videos. I, I could do this with US coins as well and maybe some other coins from other countries because yeah, the whole of the world uh, really ran in on this sound money uh, private system. And all the governments did uh, was they had the, the duty to mint these coins and make sure that they were uh, above board, so to speak, that they were always uh, the same weight, always the same content. It doesn't mean that they ran things. Uh, if you held that coin, of course, it was yours. I will be uh, doing my live stream later on tonight, 9 p.m. UK time, and Clive is going to be on as well, so make sure... Uh, you tune in to my live stream if you want to ask questions about this. We'll, we'll, I'll be uh, happy to uh, answer your questions. So with that, I'm going to wish you a, a great uh, rest of the weekend. Take care. Bye.